Hi everyone, my name is Lily Davudian and I'm from the Microsoft Defender for Cloud product team. I'm joined today by my colleague TJ Benasek from the Microsoft Sentinel team. We're really excited to share the next iteration of the Zero Trust TIC 3.0 solution with you today. We've seen a, a surge in focus and interest around Zero Trust um, as exhibited by the, the recent executive orders in the space and, and general customer feedback around Zero Trust and enabling um, this architecture across their security suite. The solution that we've built is, is a hybrid. It's a cross between our Zero Trust principles and a US government framework, TIC, the Trusted Internet Connections 3.0 that was developed out of CISA. Um, here we have a slide that that discusses really the zero trust architecture that I'm sure everyone is is very familiar with now and and at the top you can see kind of our, our three guiding principles of verify explicitly useless privilege and and assume breach and the solution that we've built is is really with this architecture in mind and understanding how we can enable customers to think about this framework and approach and build it into their security holistically. So as, as I mentioned, the solution um, is, is a crosswalk between Zero Trust and, and TIC 3.0, and this overlap really helps you understand your security posture from a comprehensive and, and holistic angle, and we make sure that you're protecting against threats and, and getting and staying secure. The solution that we've built really focuses on visibility, actionable insights, and having that automated, consistent response, and, and we'll share more about it in the slides to come and in the demo. As, as those of you using the Microsoft ecosystem are, are aware, we have many different products that can help you understand your compliance story. Um, the M365 Compliance Manager and Microsoft Defender for Cloud is a great place to start when thinking about your regulatory compliance posture, and you can couple these insights with that logging over time and that rich telemetry from Microsoft Sentinel. And again, the solution that we have today really brings this story together and helps you understand how to drive compliance with regards to Zero Trust. So what's new in the solution? Well, I, I want to start by saying that we have a really great user community that's helped us understand what's going well, what we need to improve and, and the areas that we have for growth. Um, this is a, a good call out that in the in the tool, we have a, a survey option at the top that TJ will show, and we really, really encourage you to keep giving your feedback. It really drives all of our improvements, and, and hopefully as you watch us share what's new, you'll recognize some mm -hmm. of the features and the call outs from feedback that we've gotten from this great community. So we're, we're really grateful for that. We have changed the interface to, to have better performance and simplicity and, and to be able to operate at a larger scale. Um, we also are able to leverage some of the great Better Together stories and improvements that we've seen across our products. So you'll see really awesome integrations between Defender for Cloud and Microsoft Sentinel so that when we show a vulnerability or an option opportunity to harden your attack surface, we have this amazing deep link direct pivot into Defender for Cloud. So you not only get that visibility, but also that remediation all from one pane of glass. And, and we're really trying to to reduce the burden on your security teams and make it easier to get secure and to stay secure over time. So the benefits, um, you'll, you'll see some of these as, as we work through the demo, but given the, the way the solution is spread, we really have the, the workbook to give you that visibility and to help implementers and assessors understand your posture. It really helps with that design and build phase to understand where you are and where you have opportunities for growth. Um, we also have the integration with Defender for Cloud and with other Microsoft products that allows you to respond to threats and to get secure. Um, we have an awesome print to PDF feature that TJ will show that allows you to take this dashboard and to take these visualizations and to share them with decision makers and with auditors to build them into your roadmap um, and, and really to get the most out of, out of the solution. We have a, a great story across the Microsoft ecosystem we bring in telemetry from over Microsoft, 25 different Microsoft products, but we couple that with really great third party integrations. We want to let you take advantage of your security investments, whether or not they're in Azure, and to have this really be a one stop shop to understand your posture across third party on prem and, and Microsoft tooling.
and the the solution content really highlights this well. So the the first part of it is is the workbook, which is again how you can do the the design and build. It's a visualization of your your environment with regards to the Zero Trust and Tick 3.0 frameworks. Um, it's a great place to get started. We're bringing in over 200 visualizations that you can easily filter through some parameters at the top that that TJ will show. So this is a great place to start um, to think about your visualizations and and to be able to do that customized reporting as necessary. Um, you can look at this for one subscription. You can look at it across tenants. You can look at it over time or or for one day. Um, so it's very, very customizable. We want it to be something that you can use right out of the box. Um, and, and there are a lot of different use cases here across compliance teams and, and SOC players. We also have the analytics rules that really help you do the, the monitoring and alerting and making sure that you're continuously improving your posture over time. And finally, we've improved our, our playbook for that built in response. We want to make sure that we're minimizing the time that your security professionals need to spend in the tool or navigating across portals and instead building in that consistent automated response because we know that um, security teams are, are overwhelmed and we want to automate what we can and let them focus on the highest priority um, tasks. So the, the way the um, workbook is done is, is we have control cards um, that you can see here. The blue is for deep links, which allow you to really seamlessly pivot to Microsoft documentation, um, to different portals, and, and, and really understand kind of how you can uh, build your posture relative to this control card. Um, and, and we also have that mapping back to, to NIST and, and things like that. So TJ will show the control cards in action um, through the demo. Thank you, Lily. Afternoon, Team TJ Benassi from the Microsoft Sentinel Product Group. Um, definitely really want to thank the community for the work that we've done together. Uh, the feedback that we've had over the last year of this offering is really driving where we are now and, and where we want to be with uh, this type of a, a Sentinel solution. So the original offering was launched one year ago uh, as a Microsoft Sentinel workbook. And we were able to drive community feedback and also use that to expand the solution from just a workbook into a, a full featured offering with analytics rules for monitoring with reporting. And, and as Lily talked about, a lot of that uh, SOAR security orchestration automation response type, type capability. So the takeaway is we want you to have a single click turnkey uh, type offering to where when you need to build, design, implement, monitor, and respond within a zero trust architecture, you have that solution. So so uh, in Ignite, we packaged it and published it as a solution, and we're now in the third iteration, um, which is marking the one year anniversary of the solution. So super excited to uh, to show you guys some of the new things that we have. Um, when we're using a solution like this, it's, it's pulling in visibility across uh, 25 plus Microsoft products, including third party ecosystems. So you can see your on premise, your hybrid, your multi cloud, your cross cloud. And uh, because of how fast that uh, these technology uh, portfolios are evolving, uh, we're really working to ensure that this content is updated uh, every quarter or so to, to give you guys best in breed of, of what we have to offer. Uh, another thing that I'd encourage is have a look at our Zero Trust uh, Deployment Center if you want to understand how this offering fits in with the greater Microsoft story for Zero Trust. Check it out there. This offering is actually aligned to uh, our seventh pillar of Zero Trust for visibility and automation. So do dig into the docs and, and have a deeper look at this offering and understand uh, the getting started steps and how you can get up and running with it. I wanted to show you guys and start off with some new features. So some of the things that we've added, what's changed in the Zero Trust solution. A lot of you have this offering, have had previous versions of it, and just want to know like, hey, what are the deltas? What are we going to get out of this one that we didn't have in the last one? So the first one is going to be much deeper visibility into vulnerability management. So that's using Microsoft Defender for Cloud to assess the endpoint, to provide an assessment of critical assets listing. And when you see a vulnerability, you're going to get a lot of data around the specific asset to help you dig in and explore. So when you just want a quick summary of an asset, you're going to have that 
Uh, you can use it as an executive report. You can also drill down. Anytime that you see blue, that's a deep link. So uh, we've invested a lot of time into deep linkage throughout here to where you'll get a heads up uh, display, uh, but anytime that you want to dig in a little bit deeper, move to an asset, move to a different product, you're going to do that very seamlessly with, uh, with this deep linkage. Next feature that we put some time into is the security orchestration automation and response. So uh, you'll see these configured uh, within the offering um, when you have requirements to use SOAR and use automation, especially in the, the universal security controls. You're going to see it a lot more in that family uh, and also in the incident response uh, based component. So you have an inventory, so you get a listing of all your automations. They're deep linked to where you can drop into the Sentinel automation page to review what each one of those do. You will also get uh, some metrics to understand which one of these do you use the most often? How do they fire over time? How efficient are they? So really just trying to tell a, a much deeper story in how we use SOAR and allow you to easily report on that. We also have conditional access. So our Microsoft Zero Trust story is uh, very centralized around pillars, identity being, uh, being a very central component of that story. And so saying, do you have conditional access on or off? Like, okay, that's helpful. That's what, what you wanna do when you implement, but we wanna give you a much deeper level of visibility in the telemetry. So after you followed the control card that, that Lily, uh, Lily showed you guys, you've implemented it, right? And then once you start to monitor it, you wanna look at it with, uh, with that very deep telemetry that Microsoft Sentinel and Defender for Cloud can pull from Azure Active Directory. So what we see here is one of those examples. We're looking at conditional access, so we know it's on and we're taking the data to understand which policies are executing, uh, how often they're being applied, how frequently they're being used, and which applications uh, are being accessed the most commonly. So we're really trying to look for uh, trends in how conditional access is applied and also help you highlight blind spots uh, if there's anything that's not being covered or not within your expectations in, in security architecture. This is a feature that we're really excited about in the security incident reporting. And so some of the feedback that we've had from the community is, okay, these things are designed out of the box to work with uh, security alerts, which is a Microsoft nat native data table. But what if I have something different? Like in this picture, we have Vectra AI, but what if, uh, you know, on my endpoint, I'm not using Microsoft Defender for endpoint, I'm using a CrowdStrike or McAfee or Symantec, whatever you have. Um, there was a requirement in the past in the previous versions to do some custom configuration to the workbook to bring in those data tables. And what we wanted to do was have a much more seamless story about including our third party partners and our ecosystems without uh, end users having to do any custom config. And so what we did was we moved away from using security alerting for uh, anything that involves that type of reporting and we moved into security incident. So the nice thing about Microsoft Sentinel is it will aggregate your events into an alert. When that alert triggers, it becomes an incident. And that's what you'll see now is uh, much more usage of the uh, security incident data table. And when you do that, all of your third party alerts that you brought in from your ecosystem, your portal, they're automatically going to populate in here to where you won't have to worry about looking around. It's using metadata tags of incidents to bring out the things that was relevant for the control. Um, also, you'll see the go to incident. Uh, in the past, that was a static link to where you have to click authenticate and move over. Uh, we've used something called a uh, contextual view, which will seamlessly move you in the workbook to the right to where you're able to go to that incident uh, without moving outside of your workbook. Once you see what you'd like and you've investigated, you can seamlessly move back to the work workbook as well. So uh, you'll see a lot of that contextual view stuff within the uh, within the offer and really just trying to make your experience much smoother for moving around through through Azure and the Microsoft portfolio and also including your, your third party ecosystem. Access control, key components of Zero Trust, uh, also within the, the identity and also uh, network-based components uh, of the TIC 3.0 framework. And one of the things that we've added in here is um, we've had these types of panels in there before, but what we've done is allowed you to move into the user profile, not via static link and a second browser tab. You're gonna go directly in with that, that contextual view. So you'll see a lot of the identity-based panels. If we tell you about a user and how frequently they're accessing the portal, we're also gonna allow you to go to their user profile with a single click. You can see who they are, how frequently they're accessing the portal, their devices, their licenses, their role-based access control, really the whole thing with a single click allows you to, to go right into Azure Active Directory and, and get a lot more context around it. And the reason this is super valuable for, for teams that are reporting is 
Um, if you see a user accessing the, the portal or maybe your security monitoring team and you're seeing that, it's hard to investigate or evaluate and drill down on an event if you don't understand the context of the user. So if I see a user that is um, executing malware and I go into their identity profile and I say, well, this is a member of my red team and they're authorized to do this and they have a charter and I would expect them to be using these tools. That's going to be a lot different story than um, this is one of our sales representatives. Like, why are they using Kali Linux in a production environment? You know, and that context is is super important with identity, and we now give you the ability to do that much more seamlessly. System baselining, an uh, incredible feature from Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Uh, it uses the existing agent that you're using to monitor your environment with Defender for Cloud, which is uh, the Azure Monitoring Agent or the legacy MMA agent. And it evaluates your endpoint down to the registry key file certificate level, and it provides a security baseline and a recommendation for, for anything that you could look at on that endpoint. When it sees things that are weak or vulnerable, it's gonna recommend that you make a change. So really getting from the, uh, uh, the, the higher level of what a cloud can cover, you know, we know we have uh, different levels. Um, getting down in the endpoint makes it a much more powerful story, really harping on our XDR story to say Sentinel plus Defender for Cloud uh, and then bring in M365 Defender and Defender for Endpoint. It's, it's now a very powerful ecosystem that can go all the way down to the registry key level or deeper. So um, you'll see these uh, where they're applicable in there. Anytime that there's a recommendation, you also get a pass fail. So in here you can see I've got 10 virtual machines that are being assessed, pass fail. And if you pan a tad bit right on these guys, you'll see um, it'll list which VMs are passing and failing. So if you've got work to do, you'll, you'll know how to get there. You also see a lot more of this filtering in here. So if you don't know our query language, which is Custo KQL, um, you have the ability to filter on the panel. So I can sort through a big data set without having to go into the query. Um, all of this is your data. So these visualizations are on top of your data. You have a quick way to filter it if, if you don't want to get into the query. But at any point where you're like, I need to know more, you have a link to drop into the raw logs and, and take that investigation as deep as you want or to any level of an artifact that you want to explore. Our Better Together story with Microsoft Defender for Cloud, we've added contextual views in here as well for remediation. Uh, one of the user questions is, if I see something and I see a remediate tab, is that gonna fix that on the spot? No, it's not. We still have something called role-based access control. Your monitoring teams, your GRC teams, um, often are not gonna have the rights to make an active change in the environment. So that contextual view uh, puts you into Defender for Cloud in the exact place to where you'd wanna make that change. Uh, and you're able to use our automation to ticket that to the appropriate group to uh, to make a change in the environment. So you'll see a lot of this in here. Uh, we've aligned uh, Defender for Cloud recommendations and regulatory compliance uh, into here to give you a really seamless view of each control and, and understand if, if you have work to do and you need to set a plan of action and milestones, this is going to tell you where you are and, and give you a path for where you need to improve. Asset inventory, this has been great feedback from our community as well. Previous versions of the uh, the workload had um, Azure Resource Graph. So it's it's really cool to be able to show control from multiple perspectives. So you get the policy-based perspective, you get Azure Resource Graph, which will show you live assets, and then you get uh, live telemetry to show the, the tools in practice. This is one of the ones that focuses on Azure Resource Graph. So it's gonna give you an inventory of all your assets hardware and software inventory are some of the most important things that, that we do in cybersecurity. Uh, you can't defend what you're not aware of. So um, this is gonna give you uh, an exact report and readout of everything that you have. So not just virtual machines, but APIs and websites and storage accounts and managed identities and all kinds of things that, that we may lose sight of in the cloud. So you get that with a deep link to every asset. If you wanna drop into those assets and have a look at what they are and change configs, awesome. Over on the right, we added context to go to other great places in Azure that'll give you this data. So you can go into your Azure inventory, which is a readily exportable report. Um, we're not just doing Azure, we're doing uh, all of Defender. You can drop into that portal and do hardware, software vulnerability, um, not just uh, virtual machines and computers. You can also look at IoT devices and network appliances. So super powerful to give that to you all in one place and also the ability to poke around if you want to go deeper and, and get more contextual reporting. Documentation is a component that, that we've added in this version. Folks really want the ability to look at a control card, make a determination on its status. 
um, put in notes. So you don't have to go to the edit panel, uh, just a free text note. You save that and you now have a view of the controls. So if you want to show this to your security leadership, you're able to do that with with your notes. If you want to reference your system security plan or different configurations, you can add that. Um, if you want to set a plan of action and milestones, so the next time you come back, you know, you know how you're doing and where you want to go. Uh, you have that within each control card to help you document that. Network mapping, another really cool feature of uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Uh, in places to where we're showing you how your network interacts, you have the ability to pop into these uh, GUI based visualizations. And what this is showing you is all of your virtual machines within your network uh, is like your cyber key terrain. Uh, you have uh, which uh, network components and virtual machines that they're working through, how they're using identity, how their encryption is applied. And anytime that you see a little red exclamation point, you're able to click on that and apply any security recommendations to harden out your posture. So making it really easy to understand where you are and where you might have a gap. So uh, for more advanced users, they're probably going to use raw telemetry to do that. For anybody else that wants to see it visually, uh, this is an another really powerful tool that you can uh, move into now. And last but not least, uh, we really don't have time to cover everything that's new. So uh, this is a summary of the last one we have for this slide is geolocation enhancement. So uh, Azure Active Directory does a great job telling you where users are coming from by geolocation. So we've really tried to build on this and you'll see this map based visualization uh, strewn throughout the offering. Super popular with folks. If your conditional access says you should only be in the United States and someone is accessing your workload from somewhere else, that can let you know that like you need to do some work in identity or you know is this an authorized uh, access attempt or is this potentially an attack um we've looked at different views to say are these successful uh attempts to access or are these failed because that'll be a really different story depending on the control we've also made sure that we can not just use your identity but pivot into other things for a better uh, context so this panel is an example of uh where people are accessing your sensitive data so we use azure active directory correlate that to azure information protection and say you've got a highly confidential uh data component and a user is in this location accessing it. So telling just a much deeper story in, in how your environment is working and in allowing you to report on that as well. So now we'll jump over to the demo based component of the presentation. I'm just going to select one of the controls, which is network access control within the networking control family. And this is how a user would use this offering. So you'd start with a control card and you would review your access control requirements. Uh, you would notice within the top left of each control card, uh, you have a deep link to the the Sysitic portal to talk about the program documentation and what you need to do there. You have a smart card of Microsoft references, so um, exactly what you need to deploy the control, no more, no less, to really help you save the time of doing a lot of research for it. Recommended logs. Anytime we have a visualization, we will give you the documentation to the log that we provided, and also the uh, product page for each capability. So. Uh, we want to show it to you as a capability, not a product name. So that way, if you have something else, you're able to see how that control aligns. And if you want to learn more about the controls that we're using, you can go to the product page to see their licensing, capability documentation, anything you want to do to, to kind of evaluate that control. If you have it, great. If you're thinking about, you know, maybe onboarding it, awesome. You have the ability to, to do that right there. And then we also have the Microsoft portal. So when we're using those 25 or so products, we don't want uh, analysts and architects and engineers and consultants have to remember in their head or keep a bookmark to how to get to each one of those portals. So anytime we recommend the, the use of a product, we have a, a link here in blue that will take you to the product portal page. So uh, you don't have to remember it. If you want to go to them, you can seamlessly click and, and continue exploring those controls a little bit further. So once I've uh, uh, onboarded my network access control, I've set up my network and my firewalls, um, and I'm confident that the control is onboarded, I then want to assess it. So I'm going to use the policy-based assessment and run a networking report to see how I'm doing and how my posture changes. Anytime that I see a gap, I want to respond to that. So I'm going to use Microsoft Defender for Cloud uh, and I can evaluate if I need to remediate. I'm probably not going to want to stay eyes to glass at all times, right? And I might not be a user that's in uh, Azure at all times. Maybe I'm just coming in for an annual audit or, uh, you know, reporting to my leadership. So um, we have alerting rules to reinforce this. So if your policy or posture changes, you'll have an alert that triggers and, and lets you know. 
And when that alert does trigger, um, if you're not in a monitoring stream, you're still going to care about getting that alert, knowing what's going on. So we have playbook automations that will see that alert trigger. They will email a distro or uh, you know representatives of your choice. Uh, that email will include the five W's of who, what, when, where, why, as well as links to click on to go and remediate that. Um, it will also trigger a Teams post. So if you have a, a team that's using a monitoring channel or a working group, you're able to provide all that data to them as well automatically. So it gives them the confidence to know that if the posture changes, it's going to give you a report. It's going to tell you what's going on. We've triggered those to a uh, default of 70%, meaning if your compliance uh, and zero trust drops below 70, once a week you'll get uh, an alert uh, that'll respond. We don't want that to be too noisy, so we've stretched that out. All of it's configurable to, to your mission needs. We also have two new automations in there for uh, ticketing. So uh, if you don't have the, the rights uh, within separation of duties or RBAC to make a change, there's automations for documentation. So if I trigger this alert, uh, create a JIRA ticket, create a ServiceNow ticket, create an Azure DevOps ticket, few automations in there to choose from to make sure that you know, you're know you documenting that and, and ticketing the appropriate team who can make that change securely within your configuration and, and change management processes. So now we'll show you the, the offering in practice. We'll go ahead and drop the slides. You'll see that I'm now in the, the new version of the Zero Trust TIC 3.0 workbook. And for those of you guys that want to know how to get started, we'll definitely have the links in the blog and the uh, the video to help you guys get onto it. But you go to Microsoft Sentinel, uh, you access Content Hub, and search Zero Trust TIC 3.0. Once you get into there, uh, it'll be a, a turnkey solution to deploy this within your workspaces. The deployment will automatically uh, lay down this workbook your analytics rules, and your playbooks. So um, a domain-based solution that you could use for, for purpose-driven workloads and reporting. And the first thing that we have is the parameter-based filtering. So if I want to know how to get started, um, this is very similar to our readme file. Do follow those steps uh, for folks that, that do have challenges. A lot of times when we work with them, we'll say, hey, we got most of the steps, but we still need to do you know A, B, and C to make sure that this is giving you what you want. Keep in mind that if a panel isn't coming up, um, that's not always a bad thing. It's actually giving you situational awareness. So there's a requirement for me to use endpoint detection and response, and I don't see anything happening within uh, that panel. That's uh, a cue for me to say, uh, am I licensed for that product? Is it onboarded? Is the data in Sentinel and is it healthy? So uh, enabling decision making. You're able to use these parameters to operate at scale. So if you're using uh, maybe as a large organization or an MSSP consultant, um, visibility down into multiple organizations, you can choose that. Uh, it'll automatically scale the Lighthouse. You can basically build a custom report for any area or workload that you're monitoring, and you can decide what time range uh, you'd like to see it. I do want to make a call out to our survey. We use this to drive the future development of the offering uh, anonymous. Uh, feel free to tell us what you love, what you hate about it. We use that to drive the, the future of the offering. So do click there and let us know what you think. We have an overview of the solution with pointers to the Microsoft Zero Trust model and the TIC 3.0 guidance as well. So we're going to fall into the, the network monitoring scenario. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go into networking. And you'll notice when I roll down, we now have double parameters. Uh, this improves performance. Uh, I'll go to the control of interest, which is network-based access control. And when I scroll down, we see the control card that we talked about with all of the deep linkage. Uh, we also have the uh, telemetry here that tells us how we're doing. So there's a few things that I need to do within network access control. And I can look down through these and say, okay, there's some work that I need. This one right here is kind of piquing my interest. Management ports on virtual machines should have just-in-time access. So that's saying that someone within my network could use port 3389 or port 22 for SSH to, to access my machines, and, and I definitely don't want that. So I'm going to roll over here to the right, and we see our remediate button. Remediate will automatically move us into Defender for Cloud, and you'll notice that it did that within our browser. We're still in the workbook. We just panned right. And now we see all of our assets that have those management ports exposed, and we're able to trigger a fix uh, on the spot, or our automations can ticket that to the appropriate team. So very seamless. We want to make sure that if we give you a recommendation, we give you a fix. And then a single click brings us right back into our workbook experience so we can continue on. Once we're happy with that, we can put our documentation of our control right here, uh, talk about when we onboarded it, add any notes that we're interested. 
we've got a few other metadata panels that might help us out in, in exploring that control. After we're onboarded and we're happy with that, we will go to our posture assessment. So posture assessment is using Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and we can evaluate all the different areas of tick. Right now, you'll see that I've selected networking, and this will respond to that. So I have a policy assessment of all of my assets. Um, each recommendation against an asset is a score of one. So right now I'm at about 50%. Um, I have a very similar view with what I need to do for the networking control family. I have recommendations by asset, so I can see which assets are doing good and maybe not so good. Uh, I can click on any one of them to drop in and explore further. I can look at this over time. So we selected 30 days and we can see that on the 28th of February, somebody onboarded something. We had a lot of recommendations for networking and it was fixed. So that lets us go back and say, who changed something? Why do they do it insecurely? The ideal state is manage your configuration compliance drift, keep this line as, as flat as possible over time. So that's what we have for now in, in the demo team. I definitely encourage everybody, uh, go ahead and get started, uh, pull it up, uh, let us know what you think, and really excited in the partnership that we have and the future state of this offering. Back to you, Lily. Thanks, TJ. Thanks for a great demo. And as TJ mentioned, we really encourage everyone to jump in the portal, go into Content Hub and, and look at the solution and let us know how you think, how, how, how you like it. Um, the survey option that TJ shared is, is really a great way for us to get feedback and, and really looking forward to what we can do to iterate on this moving forward. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you.